Hi, I'm Brian Creer, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, arthropods. Alright, just to give you an idea of what we're working with, think spiders, crabs, insects, that's pretty much arthropods. Okay, now for some general characteristics. Arthropods all have segmented bodies. This allows for a greater degree of specialization. One segment can do one thing, another segment can do another, which helps a lot evolutionarily. They also have an exoskeleton made of chitin. This is a tough outer layer, a tough protective covering that, well, it protects them from harm. It doesn't give as much flexibility as an endoskeleton, do though. That's a skeleton on the inside. Humans have that. But insects, arthropods, not that evolved. They also have jointed appendages. In fact, the word arthropod means jointed appendage. This gives them a lot more mobility. Compare to, say, oh, a snail. Definitely a lot more mobility there. Let's look at some vital processes now. Respiration occurs through these things called tracheal tubes. Usually. We're going to talk about other ones first, but tracheal tubes occur in the majority. These open out to spiracles, basically just holes on the sides of the body that allow gases to move in and out of the body. Respiration could also occur through these things called book lungs, which open and close like the pages of a book, or in the aquatic arthropods, gills. Alright, circulation occurs in an open circulatory system. This means blood will leave the circulatory system to go into an organ. Things will diffuse in and out of the blood, and then the blood will go back into the circulatory system. This means it will diffuse at only set points in the arthropod. Humans' blood usually goes pretty much everywhere in the body, and while it remains in the circulatory system, materials can diffuse in and out at almost any point. But again, they're not quite that advanced yet. Moving right along, excretion occurs through these things called malpighian tubes. These snake their way throughout the arthropod's body and concentrate nitrogenous wastes in them. Then they'll come together and ultimately be eliminated from the body. General characteristics done, let's move along to some specifics. In crustaceans, right, think shellfish, think lobsters, crabs, that kind of thing. These have two to three body parts and mandibles. These are pincer-like structures right by the mouth. They're used to grind up food. Let's move on. Chelicerates, think spiders, horseshoe crabs, scorpions, that kind of thing. They're named chelicerates because they have these structures called chelicerae. These are used to poison their prey. On a spider, think spider fangs, things that got Peter Parker's awesome powers. They also have these things called pedipalps, which are used to grab their prey. On spiders, it's the last pair of legs. On, say, um, a scorpion, those would be the claws. Moving right along, we now have the most diverse group of arthropods, the insects. These have three body segments, two legs per body segment, six legs in total. They also have just so many different ways of doing so many different things. They have cast structures, they have different mouth parts. You don't really need to know too much of that for biology, just know it's there that they have structured cast systems where one group of insects does one thing, another group does another thing, they have different mouth parts. But the most important thing to know, life cycles. Incomplete and complete metamorphosis. In incomplete metamorphosis, an adult lays eggs. The eggs will hatch into nymphs. Nymphs look like adults, they're just small. The nymphs then mature into adults. Simple enough. Let's go to complete metamorphosis. Adults lay eggs. The eggs will hatch into larvae. The larvae do not look like the adult. This is the juvenile stage. The larva will then mature into pupa. The pupa stage the, it really doesn't move very much, it doesn't consume too much energy. That's because a lot of it is being devoted to internal changes when the larva, which is now a pupa, is becoming more like an adult. And finally, the pupa matures into an adult. And that's pretty much it for arthropods. To recap, arthropods have a segmented body. This allows for specialization, which you need segments. They also have an exoskeleton of chitin, which helps protect them. It's an outer covering. They also have jointed appendages, which increases their mobility. Respiration is performed through usually tracheal tubes, which snake their way throughout the body and allow gas exchange. These open up into spiracles, holes that allow gases to exchange with the outside world. Some do it with book lungs, some do it with gills. Circulation occurs in an open circulatory system. Blood will leave the circulatory system, materials will diffuse in and out, and then blood will re-enter the system. Excretion happens through malpighian tubes. Nitrogenous waste will diffuse into the tubes, get concentrated, and ultimately get eliminated. Groups of arthropods. First off, crustaceans. Think shellfish, crabs, and lobsters. They have these things called mandibles, which will help crush up food. They also have two to three body parts. Chelicerates. Think spiders, horseshoe crabs, scorpions. They have chelicerates, structures used to poison their prey, and pedipalps, structures used to grab their prey. Insects, the most diverse group of arthropods. Three body segments, two legs per segment. Know that they're very diverse and also know the main life cycles. Incomplete metamorphosis, adult lays eggs, eggs hatch into nymphs. Nymphs are a smaller version of the adult, and then the nymph matures into the adult. Incomplete metamorphosis, the adult lays eggs, the eggs hatch into larvae, do not look like the adult. The larva turns into a pupa. 
This is where internal changes occur and it becomes like an adult. Finally, the pupa matures into an adult. And that's it for arthropods. Alright, well that's all for now. Get on Brian Freer. See you next time.